We have to make a jacket, which would be no problem except I have a vision, a cherry jacket. Here's how it's going down. Sketch, please. Thank you. We have a base pattern. I've cut it out, cropped it, and widened the sleeves. Besides that, no changes. Now I'm sewing that together. You see that? I'm working real hard. Okay, next. Boom. Terrible angle because neither of us can tell what I'm doing. I am drafting a pattern for my cherry pockets and I have no clue how to make patterns so I'm just winging it. I know this is innovation at its finest. So what is this green stuff? It's upholstery fabric. I don't know. I like the color. It felt nice and it doesn't fray as much because there's some innocuous outdoor netting on the back. So we using this for the leaves and the stem. Just don't tell anyone this fake suede was meant for your dingy patio bench. But I still don't feel good, and I'm going to start biting people today. Kids, don't forget to take breaks. It looks all easy breezy and jokey on camera, but I was not eating well during this time or having enough water, and I cannot emphasize enough that your health, mental and physical, come before your work every time. I know it's hard when you're in the flow to stop, but working yourself to the bone isn't a move because I was like super sick for a while after this, so. But I never learned my lesson, so do as I say, not as I do. Anyway, 
I'd like to talk a little bit about the inspiration behind the jacket. I was a little behind in the class already at this point, so I had drafted up a simple jacket. So I was ready to do that. But then I pitched the cherry jacket idea to my teacher and I said, haha, um, I know this will take too long. So I came up with a simple design. So I'm just going to do that. And my teacher replied, no, you got to do this cherry jacket. And I said, girl, you said it. So here we are. Here we are. My inspiration was the image of cherries, of course, but I wanted it to be playful and fun. So the pockets of the jacket are obviously like the fruit part. And yes, it does fit my whole phone, one gel pen and other ephemera you may find laying around your room, like some snacks, constant existential dread or a balled up sock. We haven't even talked about the collar though. I wanted the stem to be stemming from a leaf collar. Honestly, not a lot of deep symbolism here, but I mostly wanted to emphasize the balance of functionality with aesthetics as one of those variables is usually sacrificed for the other, I find. I originally planned to paint a graphic on the back of the jacket, but decided I love to make my life hard and challenging so I can prove my worth as my identity is tied to my work and I, well, I've said too much. Regardless, I decided a big cherry on the back could be cute and also keeping with the playful theme. So yeah, I almost bared my soul there. How are we doing? Doing. 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 Cute pocket though. Thanks. Sleeve time. Okay, I had to recut one of my sleeves because it mysteriously disappeared and I actually never found it. I don't know how this huge tarp of a sleeve could just vanish, but it's another mystery of life, I guess. Vanishing sleeve aside, the focal point of the sleeves are the cherry palms that hang off the hem. I had a few ideas on how they would be suspended, including ribbons and zippers, but decided the most consistency could be achieved by using just the same fabric. Of course, I had to draw out patterns for that design as well.
My approach to sewing, I feel, comes from a very illustration state of mind in that I use the thread to draw on the clothing, adding details and line art like I would with an ink pen or a colored pencil. Something I love about creating apparel is that the art can actually be worn, which is so different because I usually work in just 2D. Um, but that also introduces the challenge of functionality, aka at the end of the day, the jacket has got to be wearable. But enough rambling for now. The star of the show are the cherry pom-poms. These were drafted to be detachable. The challenge here was how to accomplish that. I figured layering the two stem pieces wrong sides together and sewing them onto the jacket sleeve would work just fine. And it did. So the part of the stem that hangs off now acts kind of like a lanyard. All I had to do was attach a snap at the end of each stem that connected with the inside sleeve and now I can change out the pom-poms in case they get dirty or I feel like replacing them all with like pepper sprays for maximum defense. Basically anything with a keychain like attachment can be fastened on the sleeves now. Okay, so everyone left. I hope there's someone in here. I'm just talking to myself. I am going to work. I don't know for how much longer because I'm very tired. And I have to catch the metro home. I'm not trying to stay until 11, like yesterday. But I got all my finals done. I had three finals on Monday. And that was crazy because I was like, who, who scheduled this? But then I was like, wait, actually that's good because that means I can spend the rest of the week in studio dying. Anyway, working on this, my sleeve. But the bobbin ran out just as I was finishing, so you hate to see it. You can't find my seam ripper. Have you seen my seam ripper? And no comment on the outfit because I'm not feeling it today. So I didn't find my seam ripper, but I have a backup one. So how are you guys doing? Okay, great. Ugh. Okay. By the way, here's an update. This is the back. 
I did these. This is the empty studio. That's my workspace. I have to do the second one. Woo. Also, I just heard a noise, so now I'm scared. are so stiff it's like causing finger injury I'm dying although I feel like I am getting better at this sewing thing you know like especially because with sleeves you have to make two of them and so like on the first one I was like oh dang like that wasn't really the right method but then on the second one I can be like hey Using these new things I just learned. See? Getting neater. She's cute. Another lonely day in the studio for me. Today I was working on finishing the entire jacket up because it was due very soon and ended up staying until like 3 a.m. Shout out to my dad who gave me a ride home from school on the days when I had to pull late nights working on the jacket because I would have had to sleep in the studio and I really didn't want to do that. But anyway, I'm working on sewing together my jacket lining. It's basically like the jacket body that you've seen but in a different fabric and it goes on the inside. Speaking of fabrics, for this assignment we were required to use upcycle denim but I took it a step further and also picked up my lining from the thrift store which is also where I got my pink denim. I think it really goes to show that while quality fabrics can help, art can be created from literally any kind of materials as long as you believe in your own skills and the creativity you have to transform it. A pro tip for beginner sewers or people who want to work with fabric on a budget is to check out the fabric slash textile slash materials rack at the thrift store. Um, not a lot of people go there looking for things, so there's always a variety of fabrics and they come in yardage, so it's not pre-cut or anything. On top of being sustainable, you can also find some cool vintage prints or just generally a lot of fabric for less money than it would be at a fabric store. Anyway, enough of thrift store talk. Seriously, I feel like that's the only place I go these days. Let's talk about the blue thread fiasco of 2022. I was looking at my jacket and something was missing. If you follow me for my art on my Instagram or on here, you know I like to doodle little stars or sparkles in the margins of my drawings. So it hit me, I needed to sew those in my jacket. In what color you ask? A very specific shade of blue, like blue raspberry 
blue. However, I didn't plan this in advance and I had no blue thread. I texted everyone for a thread to no avail. I was losing hope. I was wondering if I could walk 10 miles to the nearest Walmart. Then I walked upstairs, went into the storage closet, and I found blue thread in this weird bin in the corner. And it was the most perfect shade and it was the one I had envisioned in my head. I was elated and victory was in my grasp. I can't believe I actually found the blue thread that I wanted. It's like the most perfect shade of blue. Like, look at this. This is everything. So we're gonna sew this star in blue. But this thread, she was not a normal thread, which is probably why she was in that dusty bin in the corner of that room, because this thread was surely not meant for use with a sewing machine. How do I even explain? The texture was loose, like fibers, like unprocessed fibers. It was like the manufacturers skipped a step and said, you know what, let's call it a day. Let's not twist this thread. Let's just leave it a fuzzy mess. This thread had no structural integrity at all. Okay. Anyway, all this to say, it broke every minute I sewed. It frayed so I couldn't thread it correctly into the machine and it was shedding and I was crying and it was a nightmare and I was later told this thread was probably for embroidery well someone could have told me in the end I still got the little sparkles done but morale was low so big <laughs> well well it's almost done hopefully I'm I don't want to re-thread the blue thread to finish the star because that thread made me so angry but I think I have to do it I look like an oversized toddler you guys, I just almost fainted. It was so scary. I was standing and then I just like fell. Is that supposed to happen? No, but 
I have an update. So here's this. I had to do it like separately just because like this part is on the sleeve and it doesn't look as good, but I do not care. And then that's also overlapped. So I'm like, there's like the balance of that overlapping onto the sleeve and this overlapping onto the sleeve, so. Now I'm going to ask my teacher how to attach lining. So hopefully she responds. Um, apparently the collar comes first before the lining. And she was like, it's kind of like late at this point. So do your lining, like sew it on by hand. And I was like, okay, haven't made my collar yet. Like, don't even worry about it. Like, no sweat, no sweat. Like, it's chill that I haven't made my collar yet. I'm trying to figure out like, how it would look like a leaf more. I'm like, that's not really important right now. I'm just trying to get it done. But regardless. Feeling bad. Five AM check this collar man. And if you see me wearing the same thing as yesterday, no, I'm not. Turning in my stuff. Just submitted my presentation and now we're done with the class. Ta-da! We made it to the end of the video. That was a weird... Ta-da! We made it to the end of the video. Ta-da! We made it to the end of the video! I give this jacket a 10 out of 10. I give this jacket a 50 out of 10 for effort, a 10 out of 10 for aesthetics, a 0 out of 10 for ruining my health, 3 out of 10 in the weight category because it kind of feels like those x-ray vests you need to put on at the dentist, and overall, 10 out of 10 for public response because people really enjoy seeing enlarged fruit on a piece of clothing. Overall, one of very few pieces of clothing I've sewn that I can actually wear, and probably the most fun. So at the end of the day, fun things are fun, and we should all strive to have more fun in our lives. And on that note, I will see you next time. Like this video if you eat fruit. Like this video if you don't eat fruit. Okay, bye!